Whose Land is a documentary film looking at the legitimacy of Israel in international law with a highly qualified group of historians and international lawyers. San Remo, the Villa de Vachon. This is a place where legal rights were given to both the Jewish people and the Arab people. It was the Jewish people that were chosen to be the beneficiaries of a trust, a mandate under the care of the British government in respect to Palestine. San Remo basically adopted the content of the Balfour Declaration and it was approved by 51 countries, which was then the international community. The international law that governs the settlements relies on the San Remo Conference. That is the basis. That's not been changed. The San Remo Resolution of 1920, its unanimous endorsement by the League of Nations, and the mandate document which incorporated the Balfour Declaration is binding under international law to this day. In formulating legally binding instruments, there was a recognition of the cultural historic roots of the Jewish people in that land. You see they are recognizing a pre-existing right and not creating a new right. In other words, the historical rights of the Jewish people to this land were recognized by the great powers at the time, by the equivalent of the UN at the time. Which means that if they can establish that they had a vibrant community in, in Jerusalem, in Hebron, or in Shiloh, and in, in different areas of the Holy Land, they've been given the right to reconstitute these communities. Article 80 of the UN Charter assumes the powers that were given to the League of Nations so that anything that was decided under the League of Nations, such as the San Remo Resolution, such as the Mandate for Palestine, are still legally binding under the UN Charter. It becomes part of international law. Join me, Richard Kemp, in the two-part documentary film, Whose Land? as we uncover the true story behind the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. <laughs> <laughs>